So we have been looking at simple if, and now we looked at nested if statement. But as you can see, nested if is where you give if inside a if, multiple ifs, which can get a little cumbersome. Now we wanted to avoid that, right? We said, what is an alternative way of writing this in a slightly more concise manner? That is where IFS will come into picture. We will look at IFS now. Okay, now we are going to look at IFS. How do I write IFS? I already have this, but how do I write IFS? Equal to IFS. So IFS, ifs, you can simply call it ifs also. Then look at the syntax. What are the arguments it's expecting? Of course, we have to give the logical test, right? Logical test one and value if true one. So logical test one is C2 equal to five. Then I have to reference this cell and I'm going to use absolute referencing. Okay, comma, look at that. Now after comma, look at what is it asking? Not value if false. With if, the next argument was what should happen if the value is false? But here it's asking for logical test two. So directly I can type the logical test two. What is my logical test two? This, oh, sorry, not this, no. This equal to four. Then, then what to do if it is equal to four? I need to give so and so as the bonus and I'm going to use absolute referencing for it, comma. Then it's asking logical test three. What is logical test three? I have to check whether the job rating is equal to three. And if that is true, what should I do? I need to give this as the bonus and it should be made an absolute reference, comma. Next logical test, logical test number four. Logical test four is, is this value equal to two? If true, if true, then I'll reference this and make it an absolute reference. Then what to do? How do we handle for one? Okay, how do we handle for one? What I will do here is not handle it for now. Let me just close it. Okay, let me just close it and I have an error for one. Because I have not applied anything for one, I'll copy down the formula. Rest of the places it's working fine. Okay, the rest of the places it is working fine. Okay, but wherever I had rating of one for which I did not handle in my formula, it's not able to do anything. It's saying you have not told me what to do and it's just giving me an error. What is the error that I'm getting here? Not applicable or not available. NA, NA means something that is not available. Okay, now how do we handle this? There is one very interesting way of handling it in this particular scenario. For one, I have to do something. So how I can give it is, I will give an argument true comma zero. Now, how does this work? How does this work? What is true that I have given at the end of that if IFS if statement and how does it work? Let's apply it first. You see, zero, it's not NA anymore, it is zero. And if I copy down this formula, you see zeros. I have handled the NA error. How did I handle and what is happening over here? So this is the test, right? Is, is C2 equal to five? If it is equal to five, the condition would become true. Otherwise the condition is false. If I double click on this, okay, this particular one, let me uh, just calculate it. You can either hold down F9 function key. It is showing us what are the value of the test condition, or we could simply click on this calculate now. So is this condition true or not? C2 equal to five, is it true or not? Let us calculate. It is a false condition. Condition, okay. C2 equal to four, is that true? Let us calculate. That is also false. So basically the, these tests are giving us true or false, right? C2 equal to three. Let's see, what is that going to result in? False, because this is one, right? It is false. C2 equal to 2. What is it going to return? Let's calculate. False. It is also giving me false. 
So how does this formula essentially work? How does this formula, the IFS formula work is, whenever the first true condition is met, whatever has to be done based on the, whenever true condition is met, it will um, you know, go ahead and do whatever is supposed to be done for true condition. And that's it, it ends over there, all right. So only when this first condition is false, it goes to the next condition and it will check. This is also false, then it checks for the third condition. If this is also false, it goes to the fourth condition. So it will keep checking the conditions, the tests that we have written. These are called logical tests, right? It will keep on checking the logical tests until it encounters true. Okay, the moment it encounters true, which is the test condition, if the test condition becomes true, then it will return so-and-so value. So when all of these conditions are false, I'm saying by default, it is true. Rather than writing C2 is equal to one, which would have become true, right? If I had written C2 equal to one, it would have become true and then it would have given zero. But instead of writing that, it's like catch all. Okay, Let, let's say there are two, there are multiple conditions to test. For um, like for five, you have to do something. For four, you have to do something. For three, you have to do something. And for everything else, you have to do something. For everything else. Getting it? Here are everything else is just one. But what you have a lot of conditions. For everything else, what to do? We are just going to give zero. Understood? I hope you'll understood. This can be a little tricky, but I hope you'll understood. So let's check for... Um, Let's check for this particular row, okay? This particular member. So what is the formula for this one? Look at that here. C3, this is the test condition. C3 equal to five. Is it true? If I calculate, no, it's false. So if this is false, what will Excel do? It will move on and check, test the next condition. Logical test two. I'll press F9. This turned out to be true. So because logical test two has become true, it will just perform whatever has to be performed over there, value if true. What is the value we are supposed to take if it is true? The one that is there in G4. The one that is there in G4 is taken. Okay, over here, you will see that when I click on enter, under four, 2,500 would come. It does not go and test the remaining conditions. So when all the conditions that have been specified, all the tests result in a false value. We are hard coding true for everything else and giving zero. All right, I hope the purpose of true and zero and how it is handling everything else. It's like catch all for one scenario, do this for the second scenario, do this. And for all the other scenarios, catch all the other scenarios using this true condition and give zero. That is the kind of thing which has happened here.